Hey, what's up? What's going on? It's your girl, Mary Jane. Please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'd be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, my peace, my peoples. So anyways, let's get into it. Let's talk about love and hip hop Hollywood. Let's get started. So anyways, we start off with Princess. She's hopping off the web and, you know, she just, you know, spent her uh, extended honeymoon. And she's happy and basically, you know, she wants to have a baby and she's ready to have a baby. And they're at um, Lyric and, you know, A1's party. Um, A1 is letting us know his new music out. He's letting us know that he got, you know, seven singles on the radio that are doing very well. He's very talented. Then we get Alexis Sky. She hops out the whip and she's with her man. And her man is Solo Lucci. And he they're both from Atlanta. And Solo Lucci think they are the hottest couple moving through. LA <laughs> and they're both from Atlanta and so anyways they're having a good time they're chilling at the party and all that other good stuff and we get to see the mamas we get to see Lyric Mama we get to see A1's Mama and it's so good to see the mamas we know we love the mamas <laughs> so anyways um A1 got some new hit and you know he's performing the hit at you know the club location and him and Lyrica get into it because Lyrica wants to know why is he focusing on his career and everybody else's career other than hers we heard this story before so anyways but he actually can make hits he's actually a hit maker so okay make Lyrica a hit and so you know Lyrica mother's like yeah how come you ain't paying attention to the star of the show the star my daughter <laughs> And so you got Pam, Pam's there, and she's shaking her booty and everything, and she's dancing. I, I like both of the mamas. I think they're really good. I think they did a good job with their children. And um, they're married, and, you know, they're going to have kids one up, you know, one day soon. And, you know, they did it the correct way. They're not going to have kids out of wedlock or anything like that. So, you know, they actually came from a stable background, and if they wasn't financially wealthy, they were wealthy with knowledge. So anyways... You get Ray J. Ray J's all happy. He's feeling like a new man. And so anyways, you know, um, Ray J, um, Princess, and um, Solo Lucci, and um, Alex Sky, they're kind of like friends because they've been knowing each other for a month. And plus, Alex Sky's only been dating so, so, Solo Lucci for a month. And, you know, he got baggage. <laughs> he got a lot of baggage. So anyways... You know, we get into, so, you know, Solo Lucci and Ray J, they leave the situation where, where they was at the table. They leave. And so then the women talk, you know, um, Alexa Scott, she noticed that, you know, um, what is her name? Um, Princess is not drinking. Princess is not drinking at all. She was like, why are you not drinking? And then also Alexa Sky is not drinking as well. So they end up talking and they realize that they're both are late on their period and they think they might be possibly pregnant. And so we know from last episode that Princess might not be possibly pregnant because Ray J sperm is not shooting all the way up. He doesn't have swimmers that are swimming too far and he only has 9 million when the the rate that you're supposed to have the normal rate is at least uh 15 million so so we know what that story is going to end up like that princess most likely is not pregnant which she's not pregnant but you know alexis guy she's pregnant and she's only been with solo lucci for a month so you're gonna say after a month you don't use protection at all it's just like you know let's just do this let's just bust it raw <laughs> it's like whoa <laughs> so anyways but they're advertising this on tv it's enough. So anyways, especially with all the blind items on, on Love and Hip Hop franchise. Anyways, so they're hoping that they're pregnant, but we know Princess is not. And so then, you know, um, Lyrica, she goes, she confronts A1 and was like, yo, what about my career? What about me? Like, you're doing everything for yourself and everybody else and you're turning up and having a good time. But what about me? What about my career? What about my music? You're supposed to be working on my album. You know, it's not it's not all the way done yet. He's like, yo, don't rain on my parade. Let's just enjoy the glory of what's going on now. And so, you know, Lyrica Mother's in the background. A1 gives them both a hundred, gives his mother a hundred dollar bill, gives Lyrica's mother a hundred dollar bill, and they go to buy drinks. So they go, they're gone. <laughs> Pam was like, let's go, girl. <laughs> so they're gone. And so, um, 
Then we get Tiara Marie. She's in a great place. You know, her her court case has been dismissed. She found love and she's working on her music. And her new love is Cisco from Love and Hip Hop New York, which is a he's a music producer um, of that fashion. <laughs> so it's like um, Cisco has been with so many different women on Love and Hip Hop New York. Now he's he done found his way in Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. And, um, so we don't know how serious this relationship is going to be. We don't know if it's, we could really think that something's going to happen between them that is actually going to be serious and things are going to work out, but we wish them the best and we wish TT the best. We wish Tierra Marie the best. We always want Tierra Marie to win, but she has some demons and she has some things that are against her and she just needs help. And so hopefully Cisco can assist her with that and, and, you know, lend some help to the, to the up and coming artists. So anyways, you know, and Tiara Marie and Cisco been rocking for three months in a relationship. He loves her. She loves him. And they knew each other back in their Rockefeller days. <laughs> so anyways, and then Cisco also has, you know, a rod or something in his body where like he probably has a colostomy bag or something that he feels comfortable in sharing with Tiara Marie his personal situation that's real personal so we'll see what happens with that we don't know what's going to go on with that so anyways then um we get to safari safari's having his party for the coconut oil and nikki baby's there safari's there and then we have Chantel west she's performing she does a song song was i right. so anyway she gets off stage she's sitting there with her best friend her girl jade and, the, and you know who's on the way brooke is on the way with nia to find out who the hell jade is so you know um brooke she shows up and she's with nia or whatever <laughs> I guess Nia is a support and cast member until she can find, till she can snag herself a Hollywood man, I guess. I don't know. So, anyways, you know, Jade runs up. I mean, so, you know, Brooke runs up on Jade and was like, yo, I need to talk to you for a minute. Are you the paralegal that's talking to my man? Are you the paralegal to help my man get, get divorced? Well, you know what? You are dismissed. Your service is no longer needed. You know, you get, you got paid with dick. Oh. God, why so harsh? Why so vicious? And so Jay was like, well, how am I supposed to believe who, believe what you're saying? I don't even know you. And first of all, once you confront him and not me, and Jade is like, you know, I've been knowing him for 12 years and, and you're just some bitch off the street. How am I supposed to take you seriously, believe anything that you say? And so then that's when, you know, um, Jay, so that's when, you know, Brooke is like, well, listen, let me tell you, you better use that word bitch uh, with a little bit more description, basically. And she was like, he's done with you. He's my man. He's going to be with me forever. His kids love my kids. My kids love his kids. We have one happy family. I'm chilling with his mom and all this other stuff. And we're going to be together forever, ever, ever. <laughs> and so that's where that situation goes. And so then, you know, um, and so when, you know, Jay said, bitch, you know, um, Brooke was like, you want to get gangsta up in here? You want to get gangsta? You a gangsta? And so, you know, Jade is like, what you mean? Jade is looking kind of like twisted. Jade is a young girl and she's all caught up in the mix with these older guys. I don't know how old Marcus is compared to Jade's age, but <laughs> uh, so Jade... <laughs> Jay was like, let him speak for himself. He's a grown man. Let him speak for himself. Let him talk for himself. Basically, I don't need you speaking for him. And so anyways, um, Brooke is like, you you got it wrong. You heard it wrong. He's not going to be with you. He did not divorce his wife to end up with you. He's going to be with me. Everything you said and everything you think that is the truth is wrong. Everything's wrong. It's wrong, 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 and wrong. And so anyways, Jay was like... <laughs> Jay was like, why are you coming at me? Why are you coming at the at the woman? I had no idea about you. I didn't know you exist. I didn't know anything about you. Won't you have a conversation with him? And so, she, and so anyways, you know, um, Brooke was feeling like she's getting gangster. Brooke was like, um, don't get gangster unless you want to get gangster in this motherfucker. And so then that's when Chantel West jumps in and says, this girl is the, this girl is whiter than me. Jade is whiter than me. And she's half black. She don't know nothing about no gangster. And she ain't no gangster. I'm a gangster. I'm a gangster. I'm a gangster boo, whatever. And so then, you know, um, Brooke is like, calm that shit down. Like, you know, nobody talking to you. Just be quiet or whatever. And, and Naya, Nia was like, what? And so then 
So Brooke is walking away, and Brooke was like, yo, next time, um, Chantel West, calm yourself down. Don't get so upset. Take some pills before you come out in public and act like a damn fool, you gangster. And so she's laughing, and so then, you know, Brooke is saying to her, like, why you got this feather? This feather is just too funny. What are you, Captain Hook or something? She was like, this is the funniest thing of all night, you and this big-ass white feather. So, anyways, I don't even know what that was all about. Safari was like, (gasps) Safari be loving the beef. He be loving just the confrontation. I don't think he wants anybody to actually fight, but he likes, I think he likes the word plays, the word play between the people that are arguing or whatever. So, anyways, (laughs) I thought that was just a little bit too much. So, anyways, you get Moniz, you get Zelly, Moniz, Zelly. And, you know, Naya, they're shopping or whatever. No, Zelly's outside. Moniz and Naya are inside shopping. They meet up with Zelly. Zelly's telling them that he met up with Alexa Sky, And they was like, oh, that's so wrong. Why would you do that? And, you know, Monique was like, I would choke you first, beat the shit out of you, and then listen to what you got to say. Nia was like, yeah, that's wrong. You can't be doing that. You know, that that's terrible. Why would you do that? And so, Ze- so Zelly was like, but listen, I tried to tell... You know, Mosika, what was going on? And she didn't let me. I said Alexis, and she boated out, call me bitches, call me this. Tell me she made me and all this other stuff. And so Monisa was like, I don't know. If she said that, then she's dead wrong. But we don't know if she said that or not. So anyways, we'll get, we'll get to the bottom line of this. So they're basically not taking Zelly, um side totally and completely. They was just like, yo, you hella wrong for what you did. And so Monisa was like, I told Zelly a long time ago to run to the run to the hills and get out and stay out of their beef but he's not gonna listen there's no way he's gonna listen he gonna pay no attention to them at all <laughs> so anyways then they started talking about cisco that you know tt wants them to meet up with cisco or whatever and so zelly was like when i talked to tt she said she loved him and when she said that i almost threw up i was like he was like i almost puked i was like he is so wrong and it was like, Naya is like, Ania, she's like, does, she, does he know that she has a drinking problem that, you know, she really needs help and all this other stuff. So, so they really want somebody that to be there to help, to help her. And so also Monisa was like, you know, he called me a bitch, you know, last year, whatever year he called her a bitch because of him and Richie was going through something. So they're asking Monisa to forgive him oh, and all that other stuff. So we get um, Solo Lucci or whatever. And um, so Solo Lucci meets up with Alexis Sky, and she tells him that she's pregnant, and he's like, he's happy about it. She's not happy about it because he got baggage. He got baby mamas coming out the woodwork, want to fight her, want to beat her up. And they all on her Instagram, they all on her social media, and that's how she makes money. So they argue with each other. She's using her hands to talk. He's like, why are you using your... Then he start using his hand, and then she says, so why are you using your hand to talk? And he goes, because I'm gangster. I'm like, yo, Lord have mercy, where did they get this cast? And so, <laughs> I don't know if, um, I don't want to talk about anybody looks, but I don't know, does Solo Lucci bleach his skin? It seems like he bleaches his skin, or maybe he could have had a chemical pill before he started filming, so I'm going to keep moving um, with that. So, Hazel E's up in the studio, Ray J, and, you know, Safari thinks she's fired because, you know, Ray J took that bet, and with that bet, he had to produce an album, a song, or whatever, I hit with Azel E. They both liking it. They think she's fire. They think she's she's legit. And, you know, um, Ray J feels bad about joking about her and joking about the situation. And he feels like, you know, she's really lit. And he's he's presently surprised. So is Safari. And so then, you know, they... And so Safari asks Hazel E. if she can work with Chantel. Chant, I mean, Chantel West to show her how to move, swag, help her with a dress. And then Cisco walks in. Um, Hazel says, hello, Hazel, her phone's beeping or whatever, she, just blowing up. And she's like, oh, it's my lawyer. And, um, what's his name? Safari was like, what kind of phone is that? <laughs> so anyway, Cisco meets up with the guys and he was like, yo, I'm dating, you know, um, Tiara Marie and whatever in New York. It's all good with her. But out here in LA, she parties too much. She runs the streets. She wants me to meet her friends. And they're telling him that, yo, when you date a girl in LA, you're basically dating her friends and her enemies. And so Cisco was like, I mean, so Ray J was like, I'm, he's happy for Tiara Marie, but he want him to know that she needs help. She needs love and she needs to be safe. All she needs is somebody to save and somebody to help her. Sometimes some people do need to be saved, but do I guess the, the thing is, do they want to be saved? You can save somebody if they want to be saved. You can save anybody that wants, you know, 
to be saved or whatever. So Cisco was like, all right. So they're like, oh, Tiara Marie. So Tiara Marie bagged one. And so they're going to go out, Cisco and, and you know, Safari going to go out chilling, partying. Ray J was like, nah, I got a real one at home. I got to go home. Ray J knows. <laughs> Princess we show up at the club and beat his ass up. So, anyways, we get a one and Brooke. They're working in a studio. Brooke sounds no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, um, a one is talking to Marcus, and then um, Brooke walks in and she found out where he was at the cigar spot. She excuses a one. A one's like, I'm going to the studio, and she was like, Yo, so the bitch that was divorcing you, fucking the two. I want you to call her. Don't tell her that I'm here. And then I'm going to confront you. Like, that is a dirt down, low down, dirty motherfucker. For you to be fucking Jade or whatever, you should have some type of alliance with her where you wouldn't set her up in a situation. You would tell her, hey, this one is there. You don't set people up like that because that's how people lose their life. That's how people get killed. I know it's VH1 and it's um, loving hip hop Hollywood. But in real life, people don't do that. Don't set somebody up because you don't know what could happen. You don't know if somebody got a weapon on them or whatever. And plus, to be a decent person, to be a decent man, you wouldn't put somebody out there like that that you've been sleeping with for the longest. You know, it's not Jay's fault. She didn't know about Brooke. And Brooke is not all in her feelings and she's upset because if she, when she looks back at the situation, she's going to realize that she overreacted and she was wrong. But you know what? She's in her feelings right now and she's taking it out on Brooke. I mean, Brooke is in her feelings right now, so she's taking it out on Jade and she's taking it out on Marcus. So basically what she's doing is right, but it was, it would be nice if they would let Jade know what was, what was happening because we already know Jade's not going to fight. So don't set the poor girl up like that. So anyways... Jay shows up like she was somewhere mask mask <laughs> she was somewhere masquerading around you know what I mean she was right down the street she shows up and so then you know um Brooke has Marcus tell her that you know it's over they never got nothing he wants to be with Brooke forever and forever he wants to marry her she's the love of his life and their relationship is over it's nothing and so you know Jade is like yo um are you scared, Marcus? Is she threatening you? Nah, you might be scared, Jade, but he's he feels like he can disrespect you and do all that other stuff. And he's probably going to call you the same night to hook up, but he had to do that in front of his girl. But if, if a man diss you like that in front of your face, that is a sign for you to walk away and never turn back. Never turn back. Because if you turn back, you're going to turn into a pillow of salt of bullshit. So anyways, you know, Marcus diss her and everything told her he don't want nothing to do and she was like why why would you do this to me after 12 years like after if he known this girl for 12 years to have no type of respect for her at all not even gentleman like so you got to look at how he behaved brooke that could be you next when he dissed you when he finds somebody else and for a man to behave like that that's not somebody you want to be with period so anyways um um, Marcus walks out with, you know who, he walks out with, um, with Brooke or whatever, and then Brooke, and then, so then Marcus walks on, he was like, is everything okay, I did what you told me to do, are we good, and he's all smiling, Brooke is like, nah, we done, we finished, we over, I just, and then Marcus was like, then why did you, why did I walk out with you for, why did you tell me to, to tell her this, because I wanted you guys done, well, that's how you do it, <laughs> when you want the other female to know about you. So anyways, okay. Too much. So anyways, um, Princess finds out that she's not pregnant, but her and Ray J are going to keep working on it. And Ray J has not told Princess that he is not shooting. His sperms are not, his his, his sperm count is low. He hasn't told Princess that yet. So anyways, she tells him that she's not pregnant. He's sad. And hopefully Ray J hurry up and tell her so Princess doesn't think there's something wrong with her and be all stressed out. So Ray J said, if we can't get pregnant by the way we've been doing, there's other conventional ways that we can do. So Ray J says, I'm horny now, and they go do their thing. So anyways, um, Lyrica is um, Lyrica's in the studio with her husband, A1, and Lyrica sounds very good. That, I don't think, it's been a long time since I actually heard somebody on Love & Hip Hop sing just that quick that really sound good in the studio whatever snippet we got of it she really really sound good it's just a long time so anyways um ty dollar sister comes in with her manager and so a1 was like hold on baby i gotta go see these people so he goes out there he talks to them and he tells them that he can't sign ty um why ty dollar sign sister 
I think her name, her last name is Gold or whatever. He says that he can't sign. Her name is Angel Gold. He can't sign her or whatever. And he really does want to, but there's a reason why. So he brings Lyrica out the studio and he sets her up. So Brooke, you know, Brooke sets up, you know, um, Jade and Marcus sets up Jade. And so now A1 Ooh. is setting up his wife. But he, cause <laughs> like Brooke, <laughs> he sets up his wife. And so he said, you know, I can't sign you. And I want my wife to tell you why. And Lyrica is like, I can't believe he did this. Put me on the spot. And so Lyrica is like, nah, he can't sign nobody. Cause we made a promise that he wasn't going to sign any other female artist until he gets my career popping or get me something out there. And so then the manager is like, come on, that doesn't make any sense. Like, I know there's jealousy and this and that, but it clearly sees that your husband really want to sign, you know, and Angel. And um, it doesn't make any sense. Maybe we should meet up again and talk when everything is okay. And so Lyrica is like, what? So, you know, the lady's being smart. Lyrica's being smart. And so basically Lyrica then gets you know, crazy and was like, no, he ain't signing nobody. He ain't signing her. He ain't signing blah, blah, blah. And she's throwing a big fit. And she was like, yeah, what, what, what? And so A1's kind of disappointed at the way his wife is behaving because it was unprofessional and it was rude. But it was also unprofessional for um, A1 to put his wife in that situation to confront people that she had no idea that she was going to confront. And like Lyrica said, that she wanted to, you know, know something about the artist or know some type of information. Maybe she would have changed her mind, but, you know, it just that uh, it's not a good look for either of them because he set her up. And for her to, you know, not want her husband to work with anybody until he helps her out, Really, it really, it really sounds like a disservice that she's doing to herself and she's doing a disservice to other people that you know a1 could possibly help and put money in their pocket and better their life and better their future even more even though he's taking a long time to work on her career but sometimes it's just timing and you know you shouldn't hate on the next woman lyric especially if it's business you know if you if if anything is business at at the beginning of the day because you don't want to where you and a1 get to where you can't do business together then once you're not able to do business together you're not able to work together and do things together and that's how people can come into your relationship and mess it up you being insecure is not a good look and a1 setting you up and not being able to just tell the people no what um is a bad look that he should have did that too as well but maybe he wanted to put you on a spot to make you see how foolish it sounds for you to say that i don't want you to sign any other woman so anyways lyrica throws water on him and she walks out i just hope they get it together and you know have a common ground somewhere because i really think they're a good couple and i don't want lyrica anger and jealousy messes up her relationship because um a1 is blowing up and and i don't want a1 to get so conceited and so into itself where he think he can just set his wife up for situations like that and think they're gonna come off cool so anyways, we get Cisco. He meets up with, you know, um, Tiara Marie's friends. It goes terribly wrong because, you know, um, Cisco gets into it with, you know, Zelly. Because Zelly was like, you know, um, because it was Moniz was talking about, yeah, he called me a bitch because cause of a fuck nigga or whatever. And so then Zelly jumps in. It's like, oh, you know, you should you should, you should should forgive him for that because, you know, he did cry or whatever. Cisco, Cisco was like, I didn't cry. Moniz was like, he didn't cry. And then Zelly go, well, he's always crying because, you know, everyone does say that Cisco cries a lot on Love Hip Hop New York. And so anyways... Um, Cisco was like, what you say, huh? Or whatever. And so Zelly was like, I'll say whatever I want to say. And then that's when Cisco was like, I'm going to respectfully leave before I pound this motherfucker. And so Cisco leaves. Tiara Marie starts crying because her friends are not supporting her. She's totally wasted, drunk. She goes outside. She almost falls down. And she's um, belligerent with, you know, Cisco. But she does make the right decision to go home with him and not be on camera anymore because she almost fell waiting for the Uber. Cisco looks like he's disgusted by Tiara Marie, the way she looks and acting and not being coherent and wobbling. He's seeing the side of her that he did not see when, he was, when she was in New York with him. So anyways, peace. I'm out.